Sigismund II Augustus. Sigismund II Augustus was the king of Poland and Grand Duke of Lithuania, the only son of Sigismund I the Old, whom Sigismund II succeeded in 1548. Sigismund was the only legitimate son of Italian-born Bona Sforza and Sigismund the Old. From the beginning he was groomed and extensively educated as a successor. In 1529 he was crowned Vivente Reggae while his father was still alive. Sigismund Augustus continued a tolerance policy towards minorities and maintained peaceful relations with neighboring countries, with the exception of the Northern Seven Years' War which aimed to secure Baltic trade. Under his patronage the culture flourished in Poland, he was a collector of tapestries from the Low Countries and collected military memorabilia as well as words and armors. Sigismund Augustus' rule is widely considered as the apex of the Polish Golden Age. In 1569 he oversaw the signing of the Union of Lublin between Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, which formed the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and introduced an elective monarchy. Sigismund Augustus married three times, his first wife, Elizabeth of Austria, died in 1545 at just 18. He was then involved in several relationships with mistresses, the most famous being Barbara Radziwill who became Sigismund's second wife and Queen of Poland in spite of his mother's disapproval. The marriage was deemed scandalous and was fiercely opposed by the royal court and the nobility. Barbara died five months after her coronation, presumably due to ill health, however, rumors circulated that she was poisoned. Sigismund finally wedded Catherine of Austria, but remained childless through Uthi's life. Sigismund Augustus was last male member of the Jagiellons. Following the death of his sister Anna in 1596 the Jagiellonian dynasty came to an end. From the outset of his reign, Sigismund came into collision with the country's nobility, who had already begun curtailing the power of the great families. The ostensible cause of the nobility's animosity to the king was his second marriage, secretly contracted before his accession to the throne, with the Lithuanian Calvinist, Barbara Radziwill, daughter of Hetman Jerzy Radziwill. So violent was the agitation at Sigismund's first saying that the deputies threatened to renounce their allegiance unless the king repudiated his wife Barbara. He refused and won the day. By 1550, when Sigismund summoned his second same, a reaction had begun in his favor, and the nobility was rebuked by Pyotr Kmita, marshal of the same, who accused them of attempting to unduly diminish the legislative prerogatives of the crown. The death of Queen Barbara Five months after her coronation, under distressing circumstances, compelled Sigismund to contract a third, purely political union with his first cousin, the Austrian Archduchess Catherine, also the sister of his first wife, Elizabeth, who had died within a year of her marriage to him, before his accession. Sigismund soon lost all hope of children by his third bride. He was the last male J.G. Ellen in the direct line so the dynasty was threatened with extinction. He sought to remedy this by adultery with two of the most beautiful of his countrywomen, Barbara Gizanka and Anna Zajczkowska but was unable to impregnate either of them. The same was willing to legitimatize, and acknowledge as Sigismund's successor, any male heir who might be born to him, however, the king was to die childless. The king's marriage was a matter of great political import to Protestants and Catholics alike. The Polish Protestants hoped that he would divorce and remarry and thus bring about a breach with Rome at the very crisis of the religious struggle in Poland. He was not free to remarry until Queen Catherine's death on 28 February 1572, but he followed her to the grave less than six months later. Sigismund's reign was a period of internal turmoil and external expansion. He saw the introduction of the Protestant Reformation into Poland and Lithuania and the bureaucratic upheaval that placed most political power in the hands of the Slakta, he saw the collapse of the Knights of the Sword in the North, which led to the Commonwealth's acquisition of Livonia as a Lutheran duchy and the consolidation of Turkey's power in the South. A less imposing figure than his father, the elegant and refined Sigismund II Augustus was nevertheless an even more effective statesman than the stern and majestic Sigismund I the Old. Sigismund II possessed to a high degree the tenacity and patience that seemed to have characterized all the Jagiellons, and he added to these qualities a dexterity and diplomatic finesse. No other Polish king seems to have so thoroughly understood the nature of the Polish same. Both the Austrian ambassadors and the papal legates testified to the care with which he controlled his nation. Everything went as he wished, they said, because he seemed to know everything in advance. He managed to get more money out of the same than his father ever could and at one of his same s he won the hearts of the assembly by unexpectedly appearing before them in the simple gray coat of a Masovian lord. Like his father, a pro-Austrian by conviction, 
he contrived even in this respect to carry with him the nation, often distrustful of the Germans. He avoided serious complications with the powerful Turks. Sigismund II mediated for 20 years between the Catholic Church and the Protestants. His most striking memorial may have been the Union of Lublin, which united Poland and Lithuania into the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, the Republic of the Two Nations. Also, German speaking Royal Prussia and Prussian cities were included. This achievement might well have been impossible without Sigismund. Sigismund died at his beloved Njan on July 6, 1572, aged 51. In 1573, Henry III of Valois was elected king of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth for a few months, but then returned to France where he was crowned King Henry III of France. Shortly thereafter, Sigismund's sister Anna of Poland married Stefan Batory, and they ruled as king and queen of Poland. In addition to his family connections, Sigismund II was allied to the imperial Habsburgs by his pledge as member of the Order of the Golden Fleece. Young Sigismund is one of the figures on the Prussian homage painting by Jan Majko. Sigismund Augustus carried on with the development of several royal residencies including Wawel Castle, Vilnius Castle, Nepolomice Castle and the Royal Castle in Warsaw. In the 1560s he acquired the Tychusen Castle and rebuilt it in Renaissance style. During the reign of Sigismund Augustus the structure served as a royal residence with an impressive treasury and library as well as the main arsenal of the crown. Sigismund Augustus was a passionate collector of jewels. According to Nuncio Bernardo Bon Giovanni's relation, his collection was cashed in 16 chests. Among the precious items in his possession was Charles V's ruby of 80,000 scudos worth, as well as the emperor's diamond medal with Habsburg's eagle on any side and two columns with a sign plus ultra on the other side. In 1571, after the death of his nephew John II Sigismund Zapolya, he inherited an Hungarian crown and a Swedish crown was made for him. The Polish king treated those crowns as a family keepsake, and kept them in a private vault in the Tychusen castle. He had also a sultan's sort of 16,000 ducats worth, 30 precious horse trappings and 20 different private use armors. The king's possession included a rich collection of tapestries, commissioned by him in Brussels in the years 1550 to 1560. He married three times. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.